In example 3, the equation is tan theta equals negative root 3. So negative root 3 is not a quadrantal angle. It's going to be one of the benchmark angles. And I know tangent is negative in quadrants 2 and 4. So I'm going to draw a little set of axes right here. And I'm going to put an arbitrary angle that terminates in quadrant 2. And another one that terminates in quadrant 4. Okay. Now I've got to think, well, what reference angle has a tangent that's root 3? And some students might look at the chart. Some students may have committed this to memory. But the answer is 60. And the reference angle goes between the terminal side and the nearest x-axis. So it's going to go there. And here's the terminal side. And here's the nearest x-axis. And it's also going to go here. So the first answer is going to be 120. And the second answer is going to be 300. And if the question had wanted us to find the specific degree solutions between 0 and 360, the answers would be 120 and 300. And we'd be done. But sometimes the author of a question wants the specific radiant solutions. Well, that's pretty easy, too. We just have to convert these answers to radians. So that's going to be 2 pi over 3. and 5 pi over 3. Well, then of course, the author could want all the degree solutions. And this is where it becomes a little annoying. Uh, so I'm going to start by drawing some axes. And if we we're thinking from a graphic perspective, whoop, let's undo that. We'll call this y1, which is the tangent graph. So we know there's going to be, it's like an increasing wiggle with periodic asymptotes. So I think what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to put some asymptotes here, put some here. I'll put another set here. I'm trying to keep these equally spaced. I'm not doing the best job, but... Okay, so we've got a, oh, an increasing wiggle here. And then we'd have another one. And we'd have a piece, of, a portion of one here. And we'd have another one over here. And then another portion of one over there. There'd certainly be more if we had the room, but this is what we have room for, so that's it. Okay, now I need with my blue pen, <clears throat> I need to draw negative root 3. I'm going to make that y2. So it's going to be somewhere down here. So this line represents negative root 3. Okay. Well, they intersect here. Get to the right mode here. They intersect here. And they intersect here. And this is 120. This is 300. And it just so happens that unlike the first two examples that we looked at, these two points are corresponding points. They occur in the same position on the graph as does this one and this one. And if this orange graph came down, there would be another one over here. But all these are equally spaced. So the question is, how far apart are they? How far apart is this point from this point here? Well, it represents one complete tangent cycle, and the period for tangent is 180 or pi. So every answer is 180 from the other. So to get to this guy, we would just simply add 180. If we want to get to the next one, we'd add 180 twice. If we wanted this guy, we would subtract 180. And if we wanted this one, we'd subtract 180 yet again. We'd subtract another 180. So to express all degree solutions, we're going to say that x is equal to our home base. And I think our home base was 120. It's the first one that we came upon. 120 plus 180 n, where n is an element of the integers. 
There's fix that comma. Okay, and if it were all radian solutions, we would just convert this to radians, so that wouldn't be a big deal. X is equal to 2 pi over 3 plus pi n, where n is an element of the integers. I feel like we're gaining some nice momentum here. The first problem definitely took a long time, but uh, we're, we're definitely picking up the pace now, and um, hopefully it's becoming easier and you're getting more confident with it. Okay, let's see if we can maintain our pace as we do example four. Six cosecant theta minus four root three equals zero. So I'm gonna start by isolating and I'm going to get in that case, six cosecant theta equals four root three. Okay, the next step I'm gonna do is divide by six and I get cosecant theta is equal to 4 root 3 over 6, which reduces to 2 root 3 over 3. And what I like to do now is I, I have not committed the secondary trig ratios in my head, but I have committed to my head the Three, the three primary, sine, cosine, and tangent. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to reciprocate both sides. The reciprocal of cosecant is sine, and the reciprocal of a fraction is just turning it upside down. Three over two root three. Now at this point, it's not really recognizable, so I'm gonna rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root three over root three. And in doing this, I end up getting 3 root 3 over 6, which is root 3 over 2. And that is recognizable. Sine of theta is equal to root 3 over 2. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little mini axes. And I know sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. And I know the reference angle for which sine is root 3 over 2 is 60. So that's going to go here and here. So that means the first answer is 60. And the second answer is 120. So my specific degree solutions from 0 to 360 are 60 and 120. If the question called for radian solutions, it would be pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And now we've got this situation where they want us to find all the degree solutions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the graph again. Uh, I'm going to start by making some axes. Now I don't have a ton of space to do this, but We'll figure it out. So I think I'm going to come up over here. We'll make it the y-axis. We'll make this the x-axis. And what I'm going to do next is I'll call this y1, which is just your basic sinusoid. So I'm going to say intercept, max, intercept, min, intercept, max, intercept, min, intercept, max, intercept. And I'll continue the same thing on this side. And I won't keep saying those words because it's probably annoying. Intercept, max, intercept, min. Um, and let's just draw something here. Oh, that's really bad. But It's just to illustrate a point. You don't need to do this each and every time. Oy. All right. Yeah. Okay, that's good enough. Now, the square root of 3 over 2, I'm just going to take my calculator out. I know it's going to be something positive. The square root of 3, the square root of 3 divided by 2 is 0.87. So what I'm going to do is 
call this guy right here y2, and we know it's about 0.87 because I just did it on the calculator. So if this, if a sine graph peaks out at 1, then 0.87 might be, you know, right here. Okay, cool. So, uh, there's an intersection here and here, and the corresponding points that look just like that point would be this one, and this one, and this one. And our first answer was 60. It's kind of smushed in there, but it is. And then the next is going to be 360 apart because the period of sine is 360. So if we started at 60 and I add 360, I end up at 420 for this one. And then if I add another 360 to that, I end up at 780. But I could also subtract I could also subtract uh, 360. So I could start out at 60, I could subtract 360, and then I'd end up at negative 300, and so on and so forth. So I could say x is equal to 60 plus 360n. n is an element of the integers. But then there are these, which I'll mark in purple with an X. Those are all corresponding points as well. Uh, this guy over here is 120. And how far apart are all the other X's from this home base X? Well, it's a full cycle of sine, and a full cycle of sine is 360. So you could add 360 again and again, or you could subtract 360 once, twice, many, many times, infinitely many times. So if we wanted to express all the answers possible, it would be x equals home base 120 plus 360n, where n is an element of the integers. And if I wanted to do this in radians, it would just be a matter of converting. So this would be 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. n is an element of the integers. And going back to the black ink here, x is equal to pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. n is an element of the integers. You know, on a quiz, students will always ask, do we have to write the n is an element to the integers, yeah, you really have to. And, I, and I'm certainly going through the misery of writing it over and over again, so you do too.